Hey everyone, welcome to Weld.com. I'm Man Cub. Today we're going to be putting a cold wire feeder system on a Everlast 211 EXT. For all the people who don't know what a cold wire feeder system is, it feeds your wire just like a uh, wire feed machine for a MIG. It feeds it for you all the way up through a liner and it comes out by the nozzle right here just like that. It comes out right here with a liner and pushes into your puddle. This machine was designed, all the hookups and everything, all the dense plugs, all the anthenol connectors, was designed for a Lincoln Aspect 375. So we're going to kind of mess around the plugs, do a little problem solving, and then on top of that, we're going to jump on the bugger. We're going to mount it on the bugger and run a flat weld just to see how it's going to run and make sure everything works. So let's get into it. All right, here's our connectors from the cold wire feeder system. Uh, these two will hook up right up to the Everlast machine, the water cooler, so them are okay. Let's get them out of your way. All right, here's these two. These are our, our main problems right here. This is a six pin connector and on the Everlast right here, that's a seven pin. So obviously this won't go in. So we gotta get a seven pin female connector. We gotta put it on this. So we're basically gonna cut this off or take this apart and see how it's made and maybe desolder that. So we'll have to put that plug on here, the female, and plug it into there. So next one we're gonna talk about, see how this is made. This is made with a hole right here. So basically what that is, a gas flows through here, your argon, and it spits out through your cup. So this machine right here, don't have a gas through den. So we gotta make a separate gas line. The reason we gotta have a separate gas line is this connector right here. That's a quick disconnect, just like the water cooler. So let's go ahead and get into it. First thing we gotta do is figure out how to take these wires off here. First thing, just by studying at this, looking at this, basically we gotta remove these screws right here. Uh, the reason we gotta remove these screws and take this clamp off, because when we're twisting this, this unscrews, it's right hand thread. Well, it will turn these wires in here, it'll break them off. We don't want to do that. So we're going to pull that off and twist that. Then uh, we're going to see how that's made in there. All right. Wow, that's pretty simple. So they're only using two wires right here. I thought it would be all six. So this makes life a lot easier. All we got to do is strip this coating on the outside. Then we're going to strip this coating right here on these green and white wires. So we want to be careful that we don't cut the wires. If you do, it's not a big deal. So even though all these wires are here, don't get freaked out. I know I just did. A smart thing to do is write on the table or on your notebook and write the white wire I was using and the green wire I was using. Because someone could talk to you and mess you up or you could walk away and come back the next day. So we're gonna strip these two. And we're just gonna peel back the rest of these, get them out of the way for right now. All right, this is done. Let's go see the Everlast connector and see how that's made. All right, here's our victim. All right, so I made sure this fit on the machine. All right, we're basically, we need this connector. We're gonna figure out how this is um, put together and figure what uh, pins are using. All right, first thing, first thing, first thing, first thing. All right, uh, we're gonna cut it. Don't cut it way back here, that's stupid. You wanna leave as much wire as you can or think about what you're gonna do. So we know we're gonna we need that. So let's just cut it way up here. The reason I cut it up here, because in the future you might wanna put this plug back on. All right, that's the smart thing to do. Always leave wire. Even though you don't think right then and there you're not gonna put that plug back on. Oh, I'm never gonna use it. Well, a year from now you might. It happens to the best of us. Just by looking at this, this is telling me right here, these screws right here, same thing like the first connector. Undo this, this little clip will come off here that holds the wire tight. Then let's look at this a little bit more. Just by seeing this right here, that's a set screw. It's holding this black piece in probably. We're gonna take that out. Oh my God, I dropped it. Oh, I found it. See it, see it? Boom, right there. And this should come apart. This black thing will come out away from the silver piece. Let's turn it counterclockwise. And there's that piece just like that. All right, we got this all apart here. So I don't know which wire is doing what. So we need to go look in the Everlast manual and go find the wire diagram. So let's go ahead and go find that out. All right, here's the connector and this is the two wires from the cool wire feeder. So all we're doing is connecting these two wires and connecting these two and solder them together and tape them up. Uh, the reason I know it's these two is see how this connector looks just like in the picture. We got this top up here. So we go find one and two. So one and two is right there. F flip it over, it's these two wires. All right, that's all we gotta do. So let's go ahead and get into this. 
you, you don't want to put the wire on here because you want to put the wire you want to put the, the solder right on top of the copper you want to let it wet in there there it is see how it just wet it on top that's, that's a capillary action see how it just happened it's right on top that's it so now we're going to put tape over this all right if you want to if you were going to use heat shrink you would have put it on this over the wire before you put your before you soldered them together but we're just going to do tape so we're going to tape that so none of the power won't be open and ground out on something so let's go ahead and tape that all right here's our connection we're we're good so i'm going to go ahead and put this in and try it power's off always make sure your power's off so we're going to go ahead and put this in here all right then i'm going to go over here and switch these machines on and we're going to test test it all right here we go so hear it so there we are so everything's right so we're going to go ahead and do the gas line now we need this connector on this hose uh the everlast has got this right here so that that's good but we need this fitting to go in back of the cold wire here all right so we're going to cut this off with a grinder and then we're going to put it on here that's it didn't think about it at the time the vinyl heated up and it pulled away if you think about it it's just plastic we're heating up the metal and it's getting in the plastic it's getting liquidy like spongy so it pulled off so duh All right, everyone, we got our gas line made. So we just made our gas line that goes from the Everlast all the way to the back of the uh, Abicor Benzol cold wire feeder. Then we already made, then we already made our control right here to control the arc start of the TIG. And here's our water cooler and here's our um, den. So everything's plug and play. And let's go see if we can run a decent bead with it. She's alive. All right, let's set this bad boy. So the first one is 2T. So we're not gonna mess with that. We're not using that. So we're gonna leave that right there on 4T now. So this function right here, it highlights it. It's your pulse. So you got your pulse on and, and basically pulse off on your, on your off side or like rest for a second, then it'll come back on. Well, it depends what your time is. So we're just gonna set, leave that right there. If we go over here on this side, this is your meters per minute. So this is uh, in metric, so we're going, we wrote up here, the camera guy, one meter equals 39 inches. So, and this one is your delay time, delay of the wire coming out. So you create your puddle first. So this is your retraction time. Retraction time is when you stop and uh, your wire will retract a little bit and you basically let your puddle wet out. This is your pulse, so we went over all that. So we're gonna set our set our wire feed speed up so I'm gonna, I kind of have to uh, play with this experiment with this because I don't know this really well this machine so I'm gonna run like 120 it might be fast not really sure all right so let's go ahead and uh, play around with this all right we got this uh, Abicor cold wire feeder system hooked up on this buggo system here so uh, we're, what we're going to be doing is just right now is just running a straight stringer uh, I just want to get feel for the machine how it's going to act uh, how I want my stick out and everything. So that's what we're gonna be doing first. I'm gonna be running on 3 8 carbon steel plate, um, 332nd tungsten, 035 wire with ER70S-6. I'm running about 200 amps on this Everlast and about 20 CFH on this. So all I'm gonna do is start it and just run her all the way down. All right, all, only thing I'm doing is hitting the start right here. I'm letting go and hitting the start right here. Then we're gonna run about 12 inches of weld. Let's get into it. Here we go. I'm gonna strike the arc. Or... All right, I'm gonna wait until that puddle is the right size, how I like it. Then I'm gonna add wire. So I'm... Then I'm gonna add wire, then I'm gonna move now. Then I could add a little bit more wire. See how it's like balling up a little bit. 
Let's see if we can reach around here and add a little bit more wire. See, I don't like that when you're looking at that. I don't like that balling. See what's going on there? So I'm going to add a little bit more wire. The cool thing is you can add wire right here on top of this right here on this TIG rig. I mean, that's what's nice about it. See how we just cleared that up? Right there. That's what I like. I'm not going to play with my amps at all. I'm going to leave it right there. Pretty much got her dialed in. Everything's staying consistent. I'm running 175 amps. Uh, travel speed's 5.2. I'm running 332nd tungsten. I messed it up a little bit earlier, but still doing all right. I'm running about 0.52. On the wire speed on the cold wire feeder. I'm on continually this run. It's continuously feeding the whole time. I got the wire constantly just feeding to the edge of the puddle. I'm maintaining about a 332nd stick out. Um, I'm on my max side of my uh, tungsten sticking out of my cup. See the plate's heating up more and more. So we, we either could do two things, speed up the travel speed and try to get that puddle narrower or uh, add, add more wire and keep the same. I'm gonna come over here and add more wire. I'm trying to cool that puddle down. So we come over here. So I gotta move this switch down. And we're gonna keep adding wire. See how it's doing that? You'll see here at the end, you'll see the ripple pattern a little bit different where the wire is staying steady going in the puddle. Then you'll see where there's like drips when you guys see that ball balling back that wire. You'll, you'll actually see the ripples change um, afterwards. We'll get you an image there. I could adjust my wire a little bit towards the middle of this puddle, but everything's going all right. See how it's go to the left side of it. So I'm coming to the edge of the plate. We're going to stop here and we're going to pause the wire and turn it off. That's it. So that's it. So just by looking at this weld here, uh, I got a little smoke right here on the side. Uh, not, I don't have a big enough cup for this size torch. I think this is like a number five, five cup. I mean, I am running 150 amps on uh, 330 seconds tungsten. Uh, that's telling me that I don't have enough shielding gas. I like to get color in carbon steel. I mean, when I'm doing carbon steel, I like to keep co color in it. I know, uh, I know it's not getting hot or anything. When it starts going blue, I don't like it really because it's getting hot. You can see right where the wire was feeding really good in the ripple pattern. Uh, it was doing good. The wire was just feeding. Then when you then you could tell the wire was uh, not laying in there like a lay wire technique. It was like balling up a little bit. It was like coming back a little bit away from the puddle and droplets would just be going in there. You could tell in some spots right here where it's trying to widen that, the puddle gets like little baby dimes in them real tight. Then towards the end of the well, the last three or four inches, you could see where my uh, my wire moved over to the right a little bit of my puddle. It was on the the closest edge. I was on the right on the toe. It was feeding in. It was just it was still melting in, but you could tell where it moved over. Let's have some fun. We're going to go ahead and do pulse. So we're going to try to get that puddle or the well looking like dimes. We all like the dimes. So let's head over to the Everlast machine and set our settings. So we're going to move this over. We, we're all good here. So we're going to move this TIG pulse to standard AC DC. We need to turn it on. Our amps, I'm gonna to go to about, uh, we're going 210. We're just gonna fill out this machine. All right. Then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do a pulse time on. We're gonna do 33 for this one. Then we're gonna go pulse amps, 33. Then we're gonna go pulses per second. We're gonna up that to two. And uh, let's go. Make sure all my good, we're all good. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're gonna go ahead and fire her up. We're gonna press this down. We're gonna wait and let that warm up a little bit. All right. All right. So we're gonna add wire now, just straight wire. We're gonna go ahead and move this. See how this is gonna act. I uh, can't really see. So it's doing all right. We can slow it down a little bit, but we're just going to leave it like that. 
And I'm gonna adjust that wire up a little bit because I don't like it balling up that much. I want that just pulse because it's going to throw other dimes in there. So we're going to go ahead and speed this wire up a little bit. Uh, I'm, on, I'm kind of limited on my movement of my wire. Uh, I got a small cup on here that came with a torch. It's kind of hard to get that wire just right with a small puddle. We'll have to just run with that. I mean, I probably need a little bit more amps to wet that puddle out. But overall, it's a good start right here. We're do Everything's burning in good. Our toes are doing good. Our tungsten's not touching the puddle. And towards the end, this wire is starting to move a little bit. It's like a th 64th over to the right the same way. I could definitely tell looking at this, our uh, heat affected zone is way smaller. I mean, way smaller. So that's really good. Um, what that means is less heat in the plate, less warpage. All right, first thing I notice right off the bat, uh, there's no smoke. It means we're not overheating that carbon steel. Big differences right here. See how this heat affected zone right here is very small. It re we reduce it by half or more. That's really good. Uh, less heat in the metal means less warpage. You see how this looks like glass, but it's not glass. It's not chipping off. See how it's not chipping off? So what that looks like is the wire when it was, it was balling up a little bit and uh, it, then it was dropping there and that's what's causing that. So I'm still not happy with the uh, weld. Uh, the reason I'm not happy is the dimes are not spread out and the wire is balling up. Uh, I'm not going to adjust my torch. I want to, but I really can't right now. So with what we got, we're going to be changing the wire feed, the cold wire feeder over to pulse setting. We're going to leave everything the same on the TIG machine, the Everlast. So what we're going to do is pulse on is going to be 0 0.40, four tenths of a second. Then we're going to do pulse off uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, seven tenths of a second. So let's go ahead, see if it works. All right, we'll let that warm up a little bit. Then we're gonna add wire here. All right, all right, here we go. Let's see if this timing's right. So the weld, the weld could improve. It's it's okay, but I need more practice. So there's four things I'm gonna talk about on this weld. The first one is gonna be uh, the timings off. Uh, it would pulse on, the wire would go out. So I I need it to be on. Pulse on, on the high side, and wire needs to come in there and melt, all right? Then, and then same thing on the out. When that pulse goes low, the puddle goes smaller, the wire will go out, all right? That's what we need. The second one is gonna be um, the torch angle. The reason the torch angle uh, need to be changed is the wire. You see how the wire is balling up? Well, that's caused, be that's caused by the angle of the torch is towards the wire, and it's, it's balling up by putting too much heat on it. When you get a larger cup, so the puddle has a longer time to cool before it uh, goes out in the atmosphere. The fourth thing is, is uh, we have to uh, adjust our angle of our wire. I think it's up too high. Uh, we need to bring it down a little lower uh, to help it not as ball up. So we would have to play with them four things. And I think they will solve the problem and uh, basically get us where we want it to be. So I got more practice to do. We hooked up our wire feeder machine. We accomplished that. We got it working on the Everlast machine. Then for bonus, we put it on this buggo and we see if we can improve our welds on each one. I hope you guys learned everything. I learned a lot of stuff, still learning. Uh, always try to learn, guys. Uh, happy 4th of July. Hope everyone's staying healthy, staying safe. Uh, see you next time. I'm Man Cub and I'm out. Deuces.